what are meeting extensions? But before we dive into that, let's take a little bit of a look at the prerequisites because it doesn't work everywhere. Um, first of all, you have to, I will show you in a little bit, invite people in the meeting first. Otherwise, there's no way to add a, a meeting extension or an app to a meeting, actually. It can be a channel meeting and the mobile client doesn't support everything yet. It's on its way, but it doesn't support everything yet. Now, um, since this is the community call, I wanted to give a little tip how I usually do it or how uh, how it's easy to do stuff. I usually just take a look at yeah what does what did Microsoft do so what's one of the first party apps that way we can really see okay what can we build and how does it work and can we replicate that for our example uh, for instance this one forms works perfectly as a meeting extension I just took that one to see okay what's possible because yeah you can go to a lot of documentation and then it's it's I, in my view it's easier if you just look at it and see what it does so um you can have here we can have um, a quick walkthrough so you can have a pre-meeting an in-meeting and a post-meeting so as a tab or in the meeting as an extension yeah this is documentation i know but i don't know about you guys but yeah this this for me this doesn't do anything because i need to visualize stuff so what i usually just do is just yeah just open up a meeting so let's go to my calendar and as you like like i said let's just open up this hour so this is my uh, community call and as you can see i there's no possible way I can add a meeting extension or an app to this meeting. So uh, if I save this, remember this one, also not that perfect, still no possibility to add somebody. So I will add my favorite person in the world, which is Adele Vance. And then the moment I send this meeting, I have the possibility to edit again. So it's a little bit cumbersome, but yeah, still, uh, did, I, I don't know about you guys, but yeah, I sometimes have to create a meeting six times before it's perfect. So this one more time will, won't, won't make a difference. And now I have this perfect opportunity to add more apps. As you can see here, the meeting notes and the whiteboard already was popping up. So here I can either add my own app or I can add an existing one from Microsoft, which is the Forms one. Looks way better than my own app. Well, I'll open it up a little bit. As you can see here, we can just add the Forms app and we can start adding questions. So if it runs, there we go, loading, yeah. Um, this is, for instance, a really cool thing that you can see. A meeting extension app is just a configurable tab, meaning you need some kind of configuration page. Well, in this case, Forms didn't need a configuration page, so they solved it like this, just a little bit of a help with a learn more and a small Giphy that, makes a, that shows you what it does. So, Already I learned something, I can see, oh, 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 I don't need a configuration page. Okay, then just add something like this to your app, to your custom meeting extension app. So I save this and here I can just ask uh, questions or create a new poll and this will show up in my meeting, of course. So uh, what do you think about the community call? Let's see if I can type really fast. So cool or uh, awesome, something like that. Yeah, not much of a choice, but there we go. And then as we already saw, like I said in the slides, this is your pre-meeting opportunity to have to change something in the pre-meeting. So before the meeting started. So I can also do this with my own app. I created a simple community uh, a com company app, which just uh, shows me some uh, news from uh, one of our locations. So it's nothing fancy, nothing special. As you can see here, uh, my office location this time is in Europe. So as you can see here, I really have a configuration page. So we need to configure something before we get started. The moment I click submit, I tell Teams, as you can see here, I, tell, I get my news location, get all the news, and I tell Teams, hey, activate the same button. Same as a configurable tab. So it's nothing new in the meeting extension, just a few gotchas and things you need to know. So here's my own personal app that I built. Let's save this and let's join our meeting. So now I'm going to be in two meetings. So let's see if Teams likes that. Let me just uh, make sure that we don't have an echoing sound and see my microphone is already not working. Now in the Teams meeting, of course, we get, because this is the browser, we get a little less functionality. Normally you get like this cool bar here as well, but still we have our meeting extension. So um, our extension is here. So this is our form, which is popping up so we can add more questions or we can have um, this one I built. So you can also have a messaging extensions like this. So uh, I don't know. So for teams, you can add stuff to the meeting. Cool thing about this is, is you can give information 
that people need in the meeting directly to the meeting. So uh, if you connect this to whatever backend system you have, it, it's perfect because people are searching for stuff during the meeting. They open up browsers, they leave the meeting because they're doing something else in another system. This way you can add easily add, add this to um, a meeting. And I need to upgrade my app, of course. Um, we can also just uh, use it as a bot, of course, just like this. So if you say uh, my company app, I can just add it now because it's a bot. Oh, it just added as a user. I can even say, okay, just ping everybody and it will ping everybody in um, in the meeting. As you can see here, let's do a Teams channel data. So this is especially added for meetings. So as you can see here, alert in meeting, which will alert then everybody inside of the meeting. Um, this code will also be publicly shared, of course, makes it a little bit easier. And then everybody will get the Teams community send you a message. Now, because I'm already sharing my screen, you won't see this, but normally you get like this pop up as well that you especially are notified and you know what's going on. So we can even add uh, what else can we do? We have a form, of course, but we can add let's let's order some lunch. So we also have a pop up like I already discussed here. So we have the in-meeting experience, which is a tab, so a side panel, a pop-up, an extension, and a bot. So I already showed the bottom extension. So we can even add a pop-up. Be careful of this, of course, uh, with this, of course, because yeah, if somebody, if you're in a meeting and you're gonna start doing pop-ups, yeah, you don't want to yeah, uh, yeah, interfere in people's meeting, uh, not too hard. If it's really something that's triggered for the meeting, I don't know, uh, a vote for uh, what you thought of this sprint or something like that, then it's okay, it's, you can do it, but yeah, don't start popping up every time, every two seconds, a new screen, because people will get um, very distracted during the meeting. So uh, I, this is my lunch. So what do I want for lunch? I don't know, uh, my name, my name's Rick, of course. We can also get that from the bot, but this was easier and let's have a date. There we go. We can just even just have pop ups and you can have an entire flow added in here. So this is really, really cool. And then, of course, after the meeting. So if I close this meeting up. We, of course, if I go back to my calendar, we can go back here and we have our polls and our news, of course, or it's already um, back in the uh, meeting where it was before. So let's do this now. Like I said, it doesn't work with the channel meeting. So the moment you Let's me add a channel, something general. Yeah, I have a lot of general channels. So uh, channel meeting and then let's advance. Then this is not going to work. So remember that it's not for channel meeting. So once you um, start building with Teams meeting extensions, you should remember it's not for channel meeting. And once it wants to load, let me go back to my calendar. Yeah, there we go. See, still no opportunity to add something to this meeting. So remember that one. That's uh, very important. And then let's continue. So there we go. How do we build this ourselves? Well, if you have ever built something on Teams, you know how to do this. It's nothing really new. It's meeting extensions built is built on top of known technology. So it's tabs, bots, messaging extensions. So as you can see here, this is my uh, messaging extension. We have our tabs, we have our bot. So it's um, it's all known technology that we already seen. The only thing that changes actually is the manifest. So we have a lot of new stuff in the manifest. We have uh, channel tabs, private chat tabs, meeting chat tabs. So this will um, configure your app to be shown, of course, in which location. So if we go to, um, there's also a really cool new thing here. So if we go to our manifest, now this manifest is version dev preview still. So um, that's because I didn't update it yet. It's normally GA, but um, as you can see here, we have our context. So we already had a personal tab and a channel tab, but we now have also meeting details and meeting side panels and meeting stages. And we also have meeting services, which is coming along. So we can also have a side panel or a stage and uh, something is also new here, which I also noticed was Teams meeting devices, which is one of the cool new devices that I'm begging my boss to buy for me. But yeah, that's a different, totally different story. <laughs> Let's not go into that one. So that was a really super fast overview of the meeting extensions. I'm going to share this code publicly. I'll put it on my GitHub or somewhere. So uh, I want to thank you guys. Um, and this is my GitHub. So just search for Rick van Russel. I'll put it there. And, and that was my name, and I hope uh, we'll see you next time on the community call. Cool. That was really cool. That was really, really good. Don't stop sharing it. No, 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 no. Okay. So, so a few, uh, few pointers, uh, and of course, 
Thanks for calling out also the limitations which exist right now. Some of the things will be addressed, of course, and there will be new capabilities announced potentially even next week on some of that stuff. So, but it's really good to have a, a coverage where, where we show off uh, also what's currently supported and what work and what doesn't work because that helps and then the developers to understand what's possible. So really, really cool. Now, if you go back in, in the, the the polls or news in here, just to a recap and re-evaluate or re-elaborate what you showed. And uh, this is basically just a Teams tab, which has been then configured to be a meeting application, right? Yeah, meeting, yeah. yeah. An extra additional uh, Yep. Cool. And then the launch button here, what does that do actually? So can you explain okay. how that works? Now this is uh, live. So now it's, as you can see here, now I get this cool, I uh, know, com uh, this community call. So normally, uh, oh yeah, that was the meeting. I, just, I got a configuration that it was live. So uh, now uh, this will, now I can just say, okay, this was a cool community call or an awesome community. Let's say awesome. Let's submit it and we can view the results. And I can also do this from my meeting, of course. So if I join the meeting, let's join this meeting. But I already answered it, so I'm not sure if I can answer it one more time. Ah, here it is. But you of can, oh, but yeah, you can I can see. Yeah, exactly. Now it's live. Now we can see it. Yeah. So yeah, you can preset your um, forms. Um, re uh, yeah, your the, the questions you want to ask people. You can already prepare that, and then once you want to go live, you can just hit the button, and then you're good to go and ask those questions. We use it a lot during uh, uh, sprint plannings and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. And just and to be interest. clear, what what we're also seeing here is that it's an adaptive card with the bot behind of the scenes is basically showing automatically to the meeting uh, for the meeting attendees. Um, and then what's really cool is that the adaptive card can be updated in place. So um, it's it's basically if you have responded on the question, um, we can see the updated call also 100% below that. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that Oh no! Well, you can do that. I don't know if the full Microsoft Forms is actually doing that, but I know that it's possible to update the existing instance of the adapted card. Now, yep. Lise Arsenault is asking: Can you get results posted in the meeting tab? Also, the results posted in the meeting tab. So, if you go to the pre-meeting experience yep. back in there, uh, we can that actually see. Possible. Yep. So it's just a matter of again, how do we route the data? Uh, so it's a question: How do we implement? The, uh, where do we store the responses of these questions? And then after the meeting, you can have the post meeting summary, like in this case with Microsoft Forms, uh, of collecting the information what was collected during the meeting. And that's really the post meeting experience. So mm -hmm. um, technically pre and post meeting are kind of the same experience. So yeah, but you could make it different. Yeah. And the of cool thing about this is, yeah, yeah just absolutely. look at it, see how Microsoft does it, and rebuild, I rebuild, build something yourself, and uh, get yeah. that. Uh, yeah, the Microsoft Forms one is certainly the most uh, advanced scenario, and and mm -hmm. it works really, really well. It's also the most common scenario, probably, for meeting applications, so that you are able to ask questions from the attendees using also the pop-up mechanism. That was, by the way, a good call out as well. Let's let's only use the pop-ups when it's actually really needed because um, pop-ups basically means that it takes it's it's pauses the meeting and then people need to actually answer the question so it's it might be really annoying if there's a lot of lot of pop-ups during the meeting yeah we had uh, one question uh, they wanted to uh, because of covid people yeah they have online meetings but if you have an online meeting with somebody who needs to get paid it's very difficult so they wanted to have a pop-up that specifically said you have to pay first and then the meeting would proceed <laughs> so <laughs> that's actually a cool scenario yes absolutely absolutely and related by the way also on the scenarios please have a look on the m365 extensibility lookbook uh, scenario section there's actually really cool business to consumer scenarios explained uh, how the how banks and financial institutes, as an example, could be using the meeting applications to collect the information and have a discussion uh, with the attendees. So really, really cool ideas comes out of those uh, pictures. Mm -hmm.